I am about to follow a dry entomological tangent about periodical cicada behavior that will likely only be of interest to someone who has an anecdotal relationship with, or a hyperfixation on, these weird bugs. Because, well, I have an anecdotal relationship with, and hyperfixation on, these weird bugs. Periodical cicadas exist in broods across the eastern, southern, and midwestern areas of the United States. Their life cycle is unusual in comparison to the nearly 3,000 other species of cicada across the world. This is because cicada hatchlings spend the majority of their life developing underground, in synchronization with the rest of their brood, all to emerge the same time as adults. These cicadas emerge every 13 years, then shed their exoskeletons and fly around finding mates and laying eggs for the next generation. Their time above ground only elapses one maybe two months before they die and their children won't be seen again for another 13 years. The rarity of this event is why I have no footage of my own to share. It was late May 2011 in Columbia, Missouri when the 13-year emergence of the periodical cicada began. I was eight years old when they emerged. What I remember best was the sound. The mating call of male periodical cicadas that have been trapped underground and sexually frustrated for 13 years. Male cicadas sing using their timbal, a membranous organ which vibrates, the sound resonating through their hollow abdomen and dispersing their song up to a mile away. The sound of the cicada is the loudest sound created by any insect, able to reach louder than 90 decibels. That's nearly as loud as a chainsaw. I remember the strange, shrill buzzing noise the cicadas made when we picked them up during recess in my elementary school that year. As soon as we would run outside, we would feel the tickle of their wings as they began to swarm and land on us. It may sound like the cicada emergence was an insurrection of hordes of repulsive alien-like insects from which no one could escape, and that's because it was. But it was also a haven for weird little freak kids who now had millions of toy-like bugs to mess with. I admit that, motivated by grotesque fascination, childish naivete, and a little bit of evil, we used to pick up two cicadas and press the rear ends of their abdomens together in a dim-witted attempt to make them have sex. Our fascination with the creatures wasn't exclusive. My tiny Missouri town made national headlines that year when our local ice cream shop, Sparky's, released a limited edition cicada-flavored ice cream. Boiled, coated in brown sugar, then milk chocolate, mixed in with a buttery brown sugar vanilla ice cream base, some wings left in, for crunch. In France, they also have a curious affinity for the insects, especially in the southern region of Provence. There, you can find cicadas immortalized in dish towels, soaps, and ceramic figurines. They have a myth there that cicadas were created by God to awaken lazy peasants from their afternoon naps and get them back to work. However, God's plan for the creatures was futile as the peasants were actually comforted by the cicadas chanting and lulled back to sleep. Now the saying goes, Il ne fait pas bon de travailler quand la cigale chante. It's not good to work when the cicada is singing. The first time I had ever been to Europe, my parents took me to Provence. I was comforted by the familiar din of the cicada song. I also fondly recall my time in the south of France to this day because of the Vietnamese restaurant in ile sur sorgue where seven-year-old me discovered that the shot glasses had naked booby ladies on the bottom. But I digress. In my recollections of that summer, I still seem to hear them, humming in the heat. The same brood from my childhood, called the Great Southern Brood, is planned to emerge next summer, 13 years since I first heard them. Their song has been long awaited.